Wait, hold on a second. Did you know that this recorder right here, as well as this one, have gotten me almost on a daily basis whispers in game, DMs on Discord, YouTube comments, as well as guildies interested? Alright, so today we're tackling weak horrors and this video right here is going to be the very basics that you need to know. But before we start, make sure to give a like and subscribe for an intermediate and advanced guide about weak horrors coming soon and much much more. Just a disclaimer, I don't claim to be an expert on weak horrors, there are people far more talented than me, but when I started learning I wish there was guides that could help me every step of the way and since there are people interested I'll be sharing everything that I know. Alright, so before we start making weak auras, uh, let's actually understand what is a weak aura. So weak aura is a very powerful tool that can do basically anything and everything you can think of, as long as you know how to deal with it. Now it, this is a very complex add-on, so therefore normally when you get into it you might feel it's not as powerful as it is, but once you get actually later with more experience, you understand how really powerful this add-on is. So that being said, you can use it for things to help playing your class, so to keep track of cooldowns, procs, internal cooldowns, or anything class related. You could use it to help simplify certain uh, boss mechanics, encounter mechanics, by just having uh, weak auras, tracking when certain mechanics are happening, helping you uh, to do certain things at certain times, or just help you manage cooldowns throughout a boss fight, or actually just keep tracking and alert to everything and anything happening to you directly. And you can actually get quite fancy with this by doing custom codes, but that's like really advanced. But this is very powerful inside of raids, for example. And another thing is just quality of life, like uh, it can help you if you're missing specific mats, enchants, or not in a correct form or aspect, like here, it will remind you. Or if you're just missing certain buffs, it can do that. If you have a slightly worse computer than uh, most people, you could probably get a weak aura to uh, automatically upgrade your graphics when you go inside the raid, but then when you come outside to the open world, the weak aura actually downgrades your graphics automatically. You can use it to make uh, a weak aura that automatically fixes combat bug uh, or the combat lag bug um, and uh, also fixes the camera range reset. And all these things are just examples that I'm giving and you can, some of these bugs happen for example in Wrath of the Lich King, uh, right now I'm on the Mists of Pandaria client, but the one thing about Weakor is it's very powerful in expansion and these guides that uh, I'm doing right now, it's gonna just help you no matter what expansion it is, okay? Um, and finally you can also like, besides all of that, just make Weakor to troll your friends and do some really funny stuff. Okay, so now that we know what weak cores are, let's start with the most basic. A question that I've gotten so far is how to import a certain weak aura that uh, uh, changes your DBM or uh, big wigs to show the timeline, uh, the vertical timeline. So the first thing, let's uh, first, uh, in, just in case you're completely new, the way you open weak cores is by tapping force slash WA, uh, or there's like a mini uh, map icon here I just can click it and you open and we'll go over all these uh, uh, options so don't don't worry but uh, so let's import a weak aura we actually will go on our browser right here and I'll leave this link down on the description for everyone who wants this weak aura because I'm really getting so many whispers or like DMs about this weak aura but yeah just get this one um, and copy import string. Once you've done that, that's all. That's all there is to it. Now let's get back to our client. And you're gonna know, note that it says new weak or import and such. You click import and control V. And now you just say accept import group. And then right now, like that's it, you've done it. Uh, it's over here, let's say I want it here. I, I'll just drag that or I could drag it another way. But yeah, the point is, it's done, that's how you import. Super simple, right? Alright, so now it's time to make our very first weak aura. And our very first weak aura is gonna be basically if a target has a debuff that I just put, okay? We're just gonna do that. So um, we're gonna go on new aura and let's say for this one I want an icon and there's like all this uh, amount of stuffs 
there's templates as well that you can look into it. I'm not gonna look into templates because I feel like it's very good practice to just understand these ones. Uh, but yeah, if you were to make a template, then it asks what type of template you want. But let's go with an icon for now. I'm just gonna say, let's say I wanna keep a track of my serpent sting. Right. So now I've made a weak aura uh, that's gonna appear when the enemy target has a serpent sting. So let's actually go into triggers. And this section is all about triggers. So let's understand what trigger is. So the trigger is basically what happens, the event that happens uh, for the weak aura to show, right? So there's multiple types, uh, but in this case, it's an aura that's gonna show. Um, the aura is not gonna show on the player, it's gonna show on the target. Um, so I make it target, and this serpent sting is actually a debuff. Um, now the debuff, let's make, uh, put the name. I could put the exact ID here, uh, the spell ID, but let's use the name, serpent sting. And it automatically recognized and put that image actually. But yeah, now um, that serpent sting is done, we, we want to make sure of, of something very important, is that um, this weak aura uh, only shows if the serpent sting is mine. If there's another hunter who's gonna do serpent sting on the target, I don't want to track his serpent sting, I want to track mine. So that's why this option here exists own only right so you put this and now it only shows yours if you were to click again now it shows everyone but yours and this is just shows everyone so let's make it so it only shows us there's a, like a lot of fun uh, a lot of uh, things here in triggers and this is probably going to be the longest section of this video but uh, you can get the IDs, you can ignore names and s such and such, stack count, remaining time, total time. You can go so much deep into this uh, and you could make auto clones. And auto clones is something that uh, helps you uh, check if there's on multiple targets. But we're not going to go into that one uh, a lot today. Um, but yeah, so right now th this trigger uh, does this, right? Um, and before we finish this week aura, I'm just gonna make another one. In fact, I'm gonna duplicate this one, right? I'm just gonna call it test, actually, test. And uh, let's actually look what is inside this trigger, because trigger is probably the most complex part of week auras. So you have auras, uh, we've seen the auras, there's like all these options, arena, bosses, focus, uh, and such, a smart group, a smart group is really nice if you want to check how many people have something. Uh, Multi-target is if you want, if I were to make a weak aura that wants to check if my serpent sting is in how many of these guys, I would make like with multi-target. Uh, but uh, if something is happening to your raid and you want to see how many people in your raid have that debuff, you probably want to go with smart group. Specific unit is pretty uh, obvious it's just someone specific and um, and yeah that's it like this is pretty much uh, all there is to to auras you also have debuffs and buffs now you also have the combat log and the combat log can get, can be very scary for people starting um, but this combat log is not that bad um, so you got more options here but you need to to like take a second and try to ask yourself which uh, of these options, wh what's the thought process behind them? Because uh, on the combat log, so when something happens on uh, during combat, if a certain spell starts to be cast, then this is gonna trigger. All I need to do here is say who is the source. Maybe it's, I don't know, uh, let's, maybe it's Ly Lyshen. Lyshen just started the cast. What's the cast name? Well, probably is Thunderstruck. I believe that's a cast that he does. All right. So, and that's it. Uh, how long does the cast take? It takes four seconds and done. Now it's gonna show for four seconds his cast. But, and this is stuff that you'll obviously have to look into um, when looking uh, what uh, those uh, bosses do, like 
how long the cast is, whether it's a cast or not, because it might not be a cast. Maybe instead of a cast, it's um, uh, something like uh, an instant spell, right? In that ca in that scenario, instant spells are s are seen as cast successes. So, uh, or maybe it's just an aura applied that the boss gets, like a, a buff or a debuff, um, or something like that, right? Or maybe the boss just um, summons a totem, like Garajal, right? He summons those totems, uh, it's a summon, and you could f uh, make it to show that it's a summon, right? So, this is very complex, but at the same time, it's very, uh, it makes a lot of sense. You have in environmental stuff that you can get into it, and again, this is like really uh, uh, like long stuff. So I'm not gonna get too much in depth because this is the basics after all. But I just wanted to show you that the combat log has so many things. But just because it has so many things, don't be scared to look into it or to try certain things with it, right? Because this is very powerful, and it this almost uh, replaces the going into custom code for the very advanced people. Which we I'll explain later on, like way later on. But uh, this just shows uh, certain things in the combat log. So you you should like once you get used to it, custom code. Sometimes it's very common, and I, I've done this myself. That I just start doing something with custom code, and I could have just used this one instead. Like this function here, combat log function is very very powerful. There's the custom that's just gonna be with. Uh, code. I'm not gonna get to, into that at all today. And then there's the items that I told you that you could look into cooldown progress. Uh, how many you have? The, is the weapon enchant missing? Which which weapon is it? And such. Um, you also have uh, interactions with other items that you uh, can look into this. And player or unit infos. Like if I'm uh, under. I, I, I used to do something like this. If I'm uh, um, if I'm under or fifty, then fifty percent health. I like to get like a sound warning that I, I'm probably gonna die soon because I'm under health. So maybe I want to use a cooldown. And uh, yeah, this is just stuff that could uh, like you can also like uh, it could save your life. But, but yeah, you can also look into uh, checking your own casts, range checks, um, and so so much more. There's so much in here. Um, and this is all very powerful. You can also like check s spell stuff, like specific spell cooldowns, and uh, whether specific uh, spells are uh, usable and such and such. And yeah, that's triggers. And uh, I hope this is not too daunting. But uh, the idea is that we understand how these triggers works. Uh, and um, another thing I, I want to say about triggers that I almost forgot is that you can actually have multiple triggers for a weak aura. You can make a weak aura with another trigger, and then another trigger, and then another, and then another, and just as many as you want. And then you, over here on the top, you can say the weak aura will only activate if all these triggers are active. And that's this, this scenario. This weak aura will only appear if all these triggers are active. Or you can make it if any of these triggers. So if trigger one is active, the weak aura appears. Maybe it doesn't need two, three, four, or five. Or maybe the the four is active and you don't need the other ones. A good example of this, and I know that examples are very helpful uh, if you're learning about weak auras, is that let's say you want the weak aura to show um, whether your dot, just like a serpent sting here. Um, Instead of showing just serpent sting, what if this weak aura were to show, let's say, serpent sting, um, leaving bomb, like uh, icy touch, right? All these debuffs that you could use, moonfire, insect swarm, um, all that stuff, right? Corruption. You could add all those spells, regardless of class, into uh, multiple triggers and put into any. Or you could make uh, something like if you wanted to use the all triggers, it you could over here uh, the all triggers. You can make like trigger one is um, I'm alive, right? In a, you go to player right here, and then conditions, and you can make a, I'm alive, 
or I'm in combat and then the trigger is Serpent Sting, something like that. You could get really fancy and this, I know this is not like the very best uh, example, but these things right here uh, will get you uh, from making very simple weak cores or very limited weak cores to actually making something more complex. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind, triggers have a lot of options and this is basically what triggers the weak core to show and you can have multiple triggers and all kinds of triggers and you can have any combinations of triggers or either all of them or just one of them. Okay, so now on to the display. Display is basically how pretty or uh, what shows on your screen. Don't get me wrong, functionality can be on displays and I do spend a lot of time on displays sometimes. But uh, for very simple Wii cores, uh, you normally won't spend a lot of time over here on display. But uh, if you actually care how things look like, you can actually get really fancy on display and make things look great. So let's let's actually start uh, with uh, from the top to the bottom. You get multiple um, options here. Um, some of them, like you get color options, you also get desaturate. Desaturate is a personal favorite of mine on certain circumstances. Let's say I can't use the spell. It's on cooldown. I like to put desaturate. If it's up, then I like to bring it to normal color. You can also get here the dynamic information, which just means it's uh, from uh, whatever we did here in triggers. Uh, if you have multiple triggers, you can select which one or if you actually want to show a specific icon for this trigger, uh, for this recorder, you can go into fall icon and then uh, choose which one. Now let's say, just for the testing purposes, I want my Serpent Sting recorder to show me uh, Frostbolt. So I type Frostbolt and there. And now when I do Serpent Sting on uh, a dummy, it's gonna show me Frostbolt, right? Uh, now, another thing you can do here, and especially if you have LVO, I believe, uh, you get the show cooldown, and this is really nice because it's just uh, there's like a clock on it. And I'm just gonna drag this here for now so we can have uh, see the the, the weak corners and the weak corner itself. Um, you can make it how big you want. I would uh, recommend that if you're doing uh, squares, that you keep this width and height the same uh, so like 261 and that's like a square right um, and you can make it as big or as small as you want personally I do like the 64 by 64 I like this small uh, this size a lot you can also get really specific here with the offsets on the X uh, axis and the, the Y axis and then you can anchor it uh, when we get into groups and stuff. I'm not gonna talk about groups today though. Um, and then finally, once you've done all of this, you get to the cool part of the display. So now you have this percent S and then when you hover, all this information that's just so weird appears. But let's actually understand this uh, very quickly and efficiently and uh, see how this works. You can show text on your Wikora. You can see that one on top of the Wikora, and that text can be multiple things, right? So it can be the progress. In that scenario, I put percent %p, and the progress is just like the time that's remaining on the debuff. So I put in the debuff, and I want the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 until uh, it runs off. You can uh, make the t, um, that's the total duration, and the total duration is uh, 15. Uh, you can make it N, which is just the name that you put here. And then uh, you can also use I to show the icon, a second icon at least. You can use S for stacks and then custom always. And then there's these extra uh, options. And again, I'm not getting into that uh, extra options um, on the bottom side. But this only goes to show that you can use text in multiple ways on, on your record. So in this scenario, I, I want to see my progress. And you, you immediately see some changes here. But I, I maybe maybe it's just me, but I don't think I'll, I'll be able to see that text. 
uh, very uh, very well during like uh, all the things happening on my screen. So, so one thing I really don't like is these decimal numbers. So I'm going to open the format options and increase precision below. And in this scenario, you'll you can make precision like really big, um, like that. <laughs> but uh, in this scenario, I just normally put the smallest, and then I, I actually put these all the way to zero. So that way, I never um, have uh, those decimal numbers. You can also change uh, like what it looks like the setup. I also like uh, the size to bigger, so I'm gonna bring up the size, and you can get really big with the size. I do know I already like the num number, uh, sorry, 25. So I'm gonna keep 25 in there. Now, this, this number is not in the middle, it's kinda in this corner, and I don't really like that. So I'm, I want it to be on the center, either the center or the top. So let's test it. Let's actually put it on the top and then on the center, see which one it's better. Let's make it go into the center. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Um, how about put it on outside, but on the top? That looks good as well, but probably not for this type of recorder. Maybe if I were to type, and again, another thing you can type here is uh, anything. For example, go left. You can say go left when something happens and uh, it's in there. But uh, I, I, I'll change back to, to my progress and um, I do want it in the center. So uh, let's put this attach to the center. Beautiful. Now another thing, I want it to glow. Let's say I want this to glow whenever I put this on my target. So I'm just gonna put this glow. And immediately this glow is very, very big. Let's say I don't like this glow. I actually would like something a bit more chill. So I'm gonna go here on extra options and uh, check how many types of clothes I have. I have this one, okay, this one is a bit more subtle. Maybe this one? Oh, that one looks really good. So whenever you change, you get these extra options. And uh, let's say I do not like that yellow. Let's say I want, ooh, white looks good. How about blue, like cyan? No, maybe, maybe more bluish. I can test all colors, but in this scenario, I do like the white a lot. Let me just change that because OCD. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's keep the white actually. Um, let's say I want more particles. That's cool as well. Maybe not as many, maybe like 15. Um, frequency, I can mess with this, but that's just spinning too fast. So let's get that back to uh, 25 as it was before. But I do want it bigger, so let's change the scale a little bit. Okay, that looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna keep it at that. Just because OCD purposes, I'm gonna put 250 here. Alright, so now we have this weak aura that's gonna pop up. Let's actually go for a test run here. And immediately there's a, an issue here, and that's because of this one. Um, so I just delete, deleted it really quick. But let's actually put Serpent Sting and go for a test run of our weak aura. Oh, see, now it appears. And because that is going down, I'm also getting the progress. And you also can see the fader of the show cooldown here going down. Now you check this out. When it runs out, it untriggers and disappears. And now when I put Serpent Sting again, it shows. Another thing is, if I want to change target, I don't want this recorder to stay because the new target doesn't have, so just like that doesn't happen, right? So I would have to press it again, and now the week order shows again, right? So that's that works beautiful. Now, one last thing about this week aura that I'm working on, this serpent thing that looks like a frost ball. Let's say when I put it on a, on a on a dummy, I want uh, something to happen, like. Uh, Let's say I want it to 
uh, either send a message in chat. Maybe I want just the sound. Let's say I want just the sound. So I'll have to go into the action stuff. And the action stuff is really cool. Let's forget this init part because this is for custom stuff. Let's focus on show. So on show, I can make a message type and say where I want this message to happen. Let's say I want it to happen as um, an emote. And the emote is just gonna say something like serpent sting is up. Right, I also wanna play a sound. And there's like a whole lot of sounds here. So let's just get a fun sound like this one saying idiot. Idiot. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So let's just use that one and we can actually loop it. We could make a loop and repeat after X amount seconds, a seconds and then just keep saying while well, the weak core is active or like uh, we can just play once. Let's just play once because this will get very annoying if we looped it. But also on hide, let's actually say that I want another emote saying a serpent sting is no longer up. And the sound this time instead of idiot will be, let's say, uh, boss. Boss. Actually, instead of that, I'm gonna get another sound. Something like really troll. And I think this one is great, like a sneeze. <laughs> yeah, that works beautiful. So it, when it goes off, it just sneezes. So let's see, actually, this week or now in actions. Because we've done this, all these actions, so let's see what actually happens. Idiot. As you can see, it says the idiot. It also says here, uh, Wyvern Serpent Sting is up. And now when it runs out, let's see what happens. <laughs> it says it's no longer up and it sneezes. All right, so that's actions for you. You can do all sorts of stuff with actions. Alright, it's getting time to wrap up this video because it's getting way too long, but it's better to be long and very informative and all the information you need is here because I really wish there was a guide on YouTube that just goes really in depth with things for every step of the process. And again, I'm going to make an intermediate guide and also an advanced guide. Hopefully this has uh, some cool feedback as well. So if you actually want to give some feedback of what you would like to see, feel free to put something on the comments or just contact me through Discord. I, so let's get to the last part of today and there's all sorts of stuff again uh, that we didn't cover today but that's that's okay because uh, these things are a bit more complex like conditions and animations and all that stuff uh, and custom code and also like all these other things but we're actually gonna look at the load set setting so let's say this record that I just made Let's say I'm a player that I play like seven characters, right? All of them are different classes. And all these weak cores come in here. Now they could all be loaded and not necessarily trigger because you put these casts as show only, but it's just things that are kind of loaded and in the back head of your computer, just there spending uh, memory or whatever. So you actually want to put them on the non-loaded. If you ever want a weak aura for testing purposes and you're just still doing the weak aura and you're going into a raid and you don't want that weak aura to appear, so you don't actually want to delete the weak aura and uh, uh, have to rework at it, you can just make never. Now this weak aura is never under any circumstance gonna appear. But let's say that you made an entire pack of weak cores just for your mage and now you want to go play your hunter uh, and then you're going to play your paladin and all that stuff and these weak cores you just want them to show for your own class so you can make again look at all these options here that you can go through but what you want to do in that scenario is go into class and the player class, if you click twice, by the way, it appears like this. I actually like this menu quite a lot. So again, you can put like one click and show the 
and uh, drop down this. But if you can go two clicks, I actually prefer this method because now you can just choose. So look how it's now not loaded. And as soon as I put Hunter, it's loaded. But let's say I only want this to show Mage. And now it's not loaded. And because it's not loaded, it's never going to trigger. So let's close the Wicorus right now and do my uh, Serpent Sting. And as you can see, the Wicorus doesn't trigger. Because it's not loaded. And that's the point with the load function. And, um, and yeah, one last thing I would like to mention before I sign off here uh, is when you do make quick orders, um, keep in mind that there's all these options. I'll mention the groups later on, but the most common ones are going to be icons and bars. Maybe progress textures as well, or uh, textures if you want to do something with it, or texts. Um, to sh show certain messages, but uh, all these ones that I said work basically the same way. Uh, bar and uh, textures and icons, they, uh, the, the reason I'm not talking about them is this just because the trigger, the display, it's almost the same thing. Um, so if you were to make a bar, uh, you'll like go in trigger the same way as we did. And then uh, the display is a little bit different. You, but it's very, very uh, easy to understand. You check the orientation, where it goes, the colors, the alphas, you can add icons, which icons, which I already saw. You can uh, make it bigger, smaller, as you prefer, as you want, and offset it, and all that stuff, and add texts, and add even glows. And if you actually go all the way to the bottom and you need more text, you can keep adding te texts wherever you want, as much as you want of anything. But yeah, I mean, that's that's basically w the basics of WeCores. I hope this was very helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sign off. I'm never good signing off, but uh, yeah, hope this was helpful. And uh, take care. Peace.